Starship's next booster in the lineup brings additional heat to South Texas. We're given a Polaris program update from Commander J-Rod. Starlink invades Earth's atmosphere, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. After our sewed on Friday, SpaceX posted a drone shot of Booster 9's earlier test that we managed to sneak into the video. And Musk shared it with his up to date thoughts concerning the chance of reaching orbital velocity with the next Starship Super Heavy launch. Quote, I think we have about a 50% probability of reaching orbital velocity. However, even getting to stage separation would be a win. So a couple days later on Sunday morning, Starship 25 was whisked away from the launch site in preparation for its booster's scheduled activities there at Starbase, Texas. A few hours later, SpaceX initiated the Orbital Launch Mounts Fire X system under B9, as well as a subtle splash pad test, done in preparation for the 33 engine static fire that followed that afternoon. Three, two, one. shutting down prematurely. So four engines shut down prematurely, but this was as much of a splash pad test as it was a booster test, and the pad looked okay -A from what I could tell. Okay. A-okay. Okay. -A okay. A okay. B9 is expected to attempt the next launch with S25, so it was lifted off the mount the following day and transported back to the high bay, probably for some engine swapping and installation of a hot staging crown that will be needed for the upcoming launch. Moving right along, Jared Isaacman, commander of Polaris Dawn, the first of a couple crewed Dragon missions culminating with Starship's first crewed flight around Earth, shared an update on X concerning Dawn's progress. He wrote that the crew were just on site for a formal update on avionics, trajectory, suit testing, and more, and that they hoped to learn more about the next Polaris mission, that would be Polaris 2 or perhaps Polaris Noon, by the end of summer. Over the past week, there were three Starlink missions from left to right on your screen. On Sunday in the evening hours, Falcon 9 lifted off from Slick 40 Florida with 22 Starlink minis on board. Then about 24 hours later, a West Coast Falcon rocket blasted out of the Vandenberg ground clouds to deliver a flock of 15 Starlink birds to low Earth orbit. And then back to the East Coast on the right there, last night Falcon took another 22 sats to Leo from Slick 40 as well. It was the fourth flight for the booster on the left, which touched down on a shortfall of Gravitas bobbing on the Atlantic, the fifth mission for this booster in the middle, landing on of course I Still Love You bobbing on the Pacific, and the ninth flight for the booster on the right, which landed on Just Read the Instructions. Hat trick. Space News reported that SpaceX's director of rideshare sales said his company is now offering payload deliveries to altitudes between 550 and 605 clicks for rideshare missions at this year's annual small satellite conference. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Thursday morning, Virgin Galactic's second private commercial joyride, Galactic 2, departed the runway to climb to an altitude of 44,000 feet via its mothership. Then it was released and burned engine to climb to an apogee of 55 miles, reaching a top speed of Mach 3. For this particular mission, the company of Virgin sought out to increase their DEI score. What exactly is a whammon? This was Galactic's third successful space flight in just over three months. Their next mission is slated for September. But that's all for this week's news. Thanks for stopping by. Friendly nod to my supporters supporting the channel. Have a nominal weekend. Until next Friday, Godspeed. Mm -hmm.